Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So over the last few months, I've been working with a new program that I discovered called Remnote, and I'm using it as my personal knowledge base, as well as my flashcard manager instead of Anki. And so today I wanted to cover how I've been using Remnote specifically as my flashcard manager for structuring my learning of coding and programming. So a few months ago, I posted a video about how I am learning to code using Anki. In case you missed that video, check it out just above and then come back here when you're done. So not long after I posted that video, I actually discovered Remnote and I liken it to Rome Research, which lets you do three key things. It structures your notes in bullet point form, allowing you to create a hierarchy of notes and structure it, um, you know, with parents and children. The second thing that it allows you to do is network your thoughts and ideas by using you know, Wikipedia style links and backlinks and references, which I found really, really powerful. And I'll probably cover in some other videos. And the third really cool thing is that it implements a built-in flashcard manager. So you'll be typing your bullet point notes as you, as you go. And if there's something you really want to learn, memorize and retain for future, there's a certain syntax you can use, double colon, where before the double colon is your question, and after is your answer. And when I saw this, I thought to myself, this is actually really, really powerful because in Anki, it's great for learning to code because you can put typed answers, structure your code. But let's say as a programmer, as a coder, you generally, you don't want to memorize everything. You can't memorize everything. You also get this scenario where there are useful snippets you don't want to memorize, but you just want to look up and be, remember the fact that you know something about that. So I want to remember about Git branching and some useful snippets around it. They might be so long that it's silly to memorize it, but if I've got it all in one nicely laid out page, uh, perhaps with my own notes around it saying, this is why I've captured this, this is what it's useful for. That is really powerful, I found. And it's something you don't really get in Anki because you've just got a system of cards. Whereas Remnote, and we'll come on to this uh, just in a second, it's intertwining notes and flashcards. And I think that is so powerful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is jump over into Remnote and kind of walk you through some of the basics of Remnote whilst I'm reviewing how I've captured and structured my code snippets across various languages, how I will review them using their built-in flashcard manager um, and hopefully you can learn some stuff along the way. So let's jump over into Remnote. And as you can see on this sidebar, you essentially have a list of documents, pages, if you will. And I've got a dedicated folder to code snippets. And that's where we are now. Now within there, I have some sub documents. And the way I personally like to do it is break it down by either languages or maybe specific interfaces. And so through doing this the last couple of weeks from learning on my day job, there's been four things that kind of crept up, Git, SQL, Python, and Unix code snippets. So that's why I've gone ahead and made separate documents for them. And I'm gonna dive into now, or zoom into the Git page. And what you can see here is I've further broken down my notes or my snippets within Git across a few different topics that have come up over the last uh, week or two. So there's a section I've dedicated to cloning. Now, a quick note on how I've kind of sectioned it out with the colors and the bolding is just like in Notion, where if you type a forward slash, I type H2 to get it to a heading two or forward slash blue to make it blue. So that's what I've done there, just to help visually separate the bits of uh, code. And so I've got one for cloning, one for configuring Git, and one for stuff related to branches. Now, within each of those sections, I've then got my captured bits of knowledge. And in actual fact, it's just a list of questions and answers, just like flashcards. For example, how do you rename a directory when cloning it? And the crucial thing here to make it a flashcard uh, in Remnote is you type this question and then add two colons at the left, and then anything after the two colons is essentially the back side of the flashcard manager. And the question is the front side. And the only additional thing is because I am focusing on code snippet uh, flashcards here, I've made the answer using the forward slash code block so that it 
makes it a really visually nice formatted code snippet. That does have, however, one downside, which I'll come on to in a second. But so now that we've got a list of question and answers and maybe some, some additional notes around it. So you can see maybe I, I wanted to say, if you don't like the name of the GitHub repo. So like I could add additional context and this is where the power comes in compared to Anki because I can review specific Git things and have additional notes. It's not as easy to do that in Anki because Anki is literally just a collection of cards. This is a collection of notes and cards. Okay, so let me just remove that and take you into how you would review this. So this is another really cool thing about Remnote is I can review my entire set of flashcards across the entire database by jumping over to this Q button here. And that will spit out every single card in my database until I get uh, fed up and tell it to stop. However, if, for example, I had a test on Git or I really wanted to refresh my mind about specifics of Git, I can jump to that document that I've kind of created for myself and say practice rem in this document and I get two options. One is practice rem in this document with space repetition. So that's literally following the SRS algorithm and you know only doing the ones that are due today. And if I get them right, they'll be pushed back to an extended time period. Whereas if I wanted to maybe cram something, you know, studying for an exam or whatever, you can say practice all the rem in this document without space repetition. And that's what I'm just gonna to do today as I show you and you'll see here that I'm presented, I've got five flashcards to review in this document. Oh, don't know why I did that. And I get presented with my question and the answer is waited to be filled in. You'll see here briefly that it is asking me to type the answer. If you watched the previous video uh, on learning to code with Anki, you'll see that one of the important things I noted when learning code flashcards is that I think you should be typing your answers because it engages, as a commenter actually said on that video, your procedural memory. It's it's using a more active part of your brain. And also I think it's closer to the actual task at hand when you want to recall this information, you'll be typing it. So you might as well memorize it by engaging the same sort of physical and mental processes. So just a brief pause and to show you how you set that up, you can jump to your settings bar. You can go to your settings, um, click on Q, and you'll see that there's a type in answer that you can select or unselect. Now, the only disadvantage of this is I believe it applies to your entire flashcard population. So something that I think hopefully they'll improve on in the future. What you'll see here is if I type the answer, git clone, git URL, the name, I've typed in my answer. You'll see actually, this is the one downside as it stands with RemNote. So I've typed in my answer and you can see visually that matches word for word, white space for white space, but it's saying it's not quite right. So it said I've got it wrong. And I believe the reason for that is when we're typing out our notes, I've put the answer in a code block. And so when you just type the answer here, it's trying to do a match it's not matching. So the only way around this at the moment is kind of ignoring what the, the system says and you know that that is right. So you say, oh, I got it hard, medium, easy. But the other thing I, I like, let me just type another one, git uh, config global. I, I actually can't remember. So let's see, dash dash unset user dot password, of course. And so let's say you had a typo in your thing you can say, edit this rem now. Let's say you didn't want to interrupt your flow or your process. You can add it to an edit later document, which I think is really powerful. It basically ends up tagging your bullet point to say edit later, and you can review that at another point in time. And when you press this, you can also add a message as to why you want to edit it later, because the likelihood is you've forgotten why you want to edit it, you know, when you come back to it in a couple of days. So I could say there is a typo. All right, boom, I don't have to think about it. There are two additional options, which is to stop studying this ever and temporarily stop studying it. Um, so it has all the same functionality as Anki, in my opinion, that you need with the clear advantages that you can structure it around your note-taking system in line. 
and you can add additional context, additional notes. And I think that is really, really powerful. And that's why I'm excited to continue using this over the next few months. And hopefully I'll follow up with how I've been getting on. Hey guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. I enjoyed making it and I'm really enjoying Remno. So if you did get some value out of this, please hit like and subscribe and stick around for more content. If you didn't catch the Anki video on this topic, please click here and check that out and check out my other recommended video here. And yeah, I'll thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.